by a show of hands, how many of you are or know a high performer? Come on, raise your hands. Yeah, most of you, right? OK, by show of hands, how many of you have heard the term, in order to get ahead, you need to play the game? Raise your hands. Right, most of you. My name is Lisa Anna Palmer, and I'm the founder of the Light Your Leadership Brand Institute. And in the next 10 minutes, I'm going to change the way you see office politics and the way that you know how to get promoted to the top of your organization. I'll tell you a story. About a year ago, I was coaching a young woman. She was a manager, probably in her late 20s, early 30s. Brilliant, PhD candidate, had five people reporting to her who loved her. She was really a star. And what I really loved about her is she had a lot of integrity. She really cared about her people. And when you spoke to her, you know, you could see that she was always interested in doing her best. One day, I went to see Natalie. And I asked her, Natalie, what's, what's wrong? Because she wasn't her normal bubbly self. And she looked sad. And she said, you know, Lisa, my director is leaving in about two weeks. He's retiring after 25 years in the organization. And I asked him for some advice. And what he said was this, that in order to get ahead in this organization as a woman, you need to be mean, like mean girl mean. I can tell you I was triggered, and that's not an easy thing to do. That really hit a spot with me because 20 years ago, I was in that young woman's shoes, minus the PhD, of course. And I thought to myself, how heartbreaking is it that in today's day and age, the next generation of leaders is being advised to be mean, to play the game, to get ahead. Think about that for a moment. Have you ever been asked to be mean and play the game to get ahead? How'd that feel to go against your values, to not get ahead based on your hard work and about your caring about getting great results for your organization? So I did a little research, and I found that this was prevalent. This advice was being given not only within organizations by mentors to the upcoming generation, within the, their successors, basically. It was also being featured in business magazines. It was being taught in schools. So I'll give you another example, a cautionary tale of a high performer. She was a director. We'll call her Amy. Amy decided to play the game even though it went against her values. Want to know what happened? Who wants to know what happened to Amy? Right. Amy crashed and burned. She came up against some of her colleagues who had played this game their entire career. And so she wasn't used to that. She was just used to being a hard worker, a good person. She burnt out from the stress, left the organization, never came back. But there's some good news. I'm going to tell you about another story about one of my clients. We'll call her Samantha. So Samantha called me in and said, Lisa, she had been newly promoted director. Lisa, I'm trying to fit in at the management table. But what I'm feeling is that I've got colleagues that are trying to backstab me. They're trying to take away my resources, and they're fighting over the ear of the VP. Can you imagine fighting over an ear, right? The coveted ear, here's my ear. <laughs> I think of Van Gogh whenever I say that. So here's Samantha. She's sitting there, and she got, luckily, promoted based on her own merit. She was a wonderful person, great personality. Her staff loved her. And now she's finding herself with having to play games 
in order to survive before being taken down by her colleagues, who were jealous of her, frankly. So she asked me, Lisa, should I play the game? And I said, you know what, promise me you won't. You're going to lose. Not because your colleague is more intelligent or better suited for the role. It's because your colleague doesn't have the same moral values that you do. They will stop at nothing, whereas your own conscience will prevent you from doing the things you need to do to win at that game. So instead, Samantha, do what you're good at. Let a fire in their hearts of your employees. Connect with your colleagues. Impress your VP by becoming really confident and great at selling your ideas, making sure that your VP knows that you're committed to not only making your team a success, but helping make the organization a success. You know what happened? Anybody want to know what happened, Samantha? Well, let me tell you. So I saw her about two months later. I said, how's it going, Samantha? Well, you know, she was smiling, she was happy, and uh, quite frankly, she was, you know, in her glory because she said, Lisa, I love the work I'm doing, and now I've got the VP's ear. <laughs> My colleagues, I've got a great relationship, except for the one that was trying to bully me the worst. And she's actually off on sick leave. So you know what? I'm able to have my resources, I'm growing my team, and I'm able to do the work that I want to do, and I'm, I'm making a great impression based on what feels good for me. So what I take away from that is Samantha looked professional, polished, confident. She knew how to deliver a business case. And her colleague, who had been trying to suck her into playing the game, looked childish, unprofessional, unprepared, and then she had a tantrum and left. So if you are one of those high performers who really care about their work and you care about people and you want to get ahead based on your own merit and get that promotion you deserve because you worked hard your entire career and to earn money to make your dreams come true, join me by going to www.lisaannapalmer.com and together we can make the world a better workplace. Thank you. <laughs>